Let's start with number 50. My number 50 player here is Ricky Pearsall, the wide receiver from Florida. Now, he's been a, a bit of a late riser during the course of the process. I like his game. I like his athleticism. And, and he falls just inside of my top 50. He's there at 50. Number 49, one of my favorite players in college football last year and really for the last few years, Mikey Sain was still the nickelback for Michigan. He falls inside of my top 50. Now, if you listen to the Plant Your Flag podcast uh, episode, I guess, last week, you'll know how highly I think of Mikey Sane Rasil. He was the best defender on the best defense in college football, and he's only been playing defense really full-time for two years. His ceiling is ridiculously high because he's a hybrid player. He can play all over the interior of the defense, meaning like the interior of the passing game, and, and he's not a guy that's going to get intimidated with matchups. I think he can cover tight ends even though he's small. He can cover wide receivers. He was a wide receiver, and he's constantly around the ball. Really love his game, so he's number 49. Tyler Newbin is a safety from Minnesota. This is a name that you've also heard on the Plant Your Flag uh, episode. Love his game. Good leader for P.J. Fleck and a guy that I think is going to be a solid pro. He's going to walk into any locker room in the National Football League and fit right in. At number 47, I've got Roman Wilson, the wide receiver from Michigan. Now, Roman Wilson is an interesting one because this, this draft is filled with solid wide receivers. Roman's one of those. His production wasn't what you're going to get from some of these other guys, but in large part, and we've talked about this before, it's because of the system and more specifically, the philosophy of the system that Michigan used to win the national championship. They just did not emphasize throwing the ball. Now, they did, and they could, and they don't win the national championship unless he makes some of those plays, in particular on, what, the fourth down play um, late in the game. He made some incredible catches against Bama to win the Rose Bowl. They would scheme him open. He's fast. He's faster than people believe. Roman Wilson is going to be a really good wide receiver at the next level. At number 46, I've got Jonathan Brooks, the running back from Texas. This is a guy that I really believe in. I love his leadership ability. His ability also to do everything on the field, whether you want him to run between the tackles or outside, hit home runs or gain tough yards, or catch it out of the backfield, he can do it all. That versatility is what I believe is where value is created for a running back, and he's got value. He's my number 46 player. Number 45, also from Texas, and a guy that hasn't gotten a lot of, of chatter, I would say, is Jatavian Sanders, the tight end. Really athletic player, and because of the fact they had so many different weapons, whether it was Brooks before the injury, uh, whether it was C.J. Baxter, the running back, the true freshman after uh, Brooks' injury, or Adonai Mitchell, or Xavier Worthy, there weren't a ton of touches specifically for the tight end, and yet Jatavian Sanders produced. And he's a heck of a player, and I love what he's able to do, in particular as a flex-move H-back style tight end. At number 44, I've got the linebacker from Michigan, Junior Colson. Now, for a few years now, going all the way back to when Mike McDonald, who's now the head coach with the Seattle Seahawks, when Mike McDonald was the defensive coordinator for the Michigan Wolverines, he raved about Junior Colson and said all the way back then, this is three years ago, okay, 2021, when Colson was just a pup, he was just a freshman, and he said, that kid's going to be a great pro. Love his background. He works hard. He he. In a lot of ways, like Mikey St. Russell, like Roman Wilson, like all these Michigan players, he, he epitomizes what it meant to be a Michigan Wolverine this last year. He was selfless, and, and his ability to be a hybrid player also in the middle of a defense I think is going to be highly valuable. So I like Junior Colson a lot. At number 43, I've got Kamari Lasseter, the corner from Georgia. At number 42, I'm going to stay in Georgia and go Lad McConkey, the wide receiver. You're going to see all sorts of wide receivers littering this list because, again, it's a super heavy, deep wide receiver draft. I'm a big fan of Lad McConkey. So it goes Lasseter, then McConkey at 42. And Lad McConkey's his route running ability, I think, is, is underappreciated. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Maybe it's not. But, but Lad McConkey gets open, and he's reliable catching the football. To me, those are two traits that are highly val valuable, highly valuable. And in a lot of ways, when they did not have Bowers after the injury, the entire offense, at least the passing game, kind of went through Lad McConkey. 
So he's at 42, the wide receiver from Georgia. At number 41, I've got Tavondre Sweat, the defensive tackle from Texas. Now, Tavondre Sweat, huge, run stuffer, and in a lot of ways is exactly what the NFL is looking for from their defensive tackles. So remember, it's a copycat sport. Now, it's going to be a copycat sport whether we're talking about the college level or the NFL level. What has succeeded? Well, Baltimore was the best defense in the NFL. Michigan was the best defense in college football, and then they won the national championship. And so everyone's going to be wanting a piece of that defense. It's a big reason why Mike McDonald went from Baltimore as a young defensive coordinator and got the head coaching position with Seattle. The crux of that defense is that the number one building block is that you've got to build a run wall. It's not get a run stuffer. It's build a run wall. And, and, Making that a, a bit of a different description means that you have to have depth at the tackle position. You can't just be one guy that's stuffing the run, but you've got to have a number of tackles that can all go in and do the same thing. So Tavondre Sweat, as that style of defense and that philosophy defense becomes more prevalent throughout the National Football League, is going to be highly valuable because that's exactly what he is. In fact, he, in a lot of ways, even more so than... Quinn Ewers or Jonathan Brooks or Jatavian Sanders or Adonai Mitchell or Xavier Worthy. The reason Texas finally got over the hump and they were, quote, back, as we've been talking about for decades now, they get to the playoff, they beat Alabama on the road. The reason that they did that is because of their defense in the line of scrimmage, not necessarily their skill position. They've had skill position players. They haven't been real at the line of scrimmage in quite some years. Now they are. And Tavondre Sweat kind of epitomizes that, along with Byron Mitchell, who we'll get to later in this list. Um, I'll stick in Texas. Xavier Worthy is number 40. Another wide receiver, Xavier Worthy. His speed and the ability to take the top off the defense is going to be highly valuable. We all know that. His ability to make plays is going to be highly valuable. We all know that. And he's going to be a, a, a huge threat uh, early in his career. At 39, I'm going to go with Edrin Cooper, the linebacker for Texas A&M. Um, now, linebackers, along with running backs, it's really hard for them to generate top-end first-round value. But at least in my estimation, I think Cooper and Colson are a couple of your better inside linebacker types, and I think Cooper is going to find himself a good home in the National Football League. 38, interior offensive line. Zach Frazier from West Virginia. He's a really good player. Interior offensive line is can be, I guess is a better way to put it, a hard evaluation. And yet, it's highly important. You've got to have an offensive line, in particular in the middle, that doesn't get pushed back into your quarterback's lap. Drafting someone like Zach Frazier is going to help somebody out. Jordan Morgan, the tackle from Arizona, he's a really good player. And, and, and that year that they had, yeah, Noah Fafito was incredible, and McMillan was incredible, right? And, and Jed Fish did a lot of great things, but... In large part, they were able to do that because they could protect Fafita. All right, the year that the Wildcats had rested in the hands of Jordan Morgan in, in a big respect. And he was sensational. And then when he didn't play in the bowl game, you kind of saw them struggle offensively, even though um, they played okay and decent and, and ended up getting the job done. Um, I'm going to go to 36, wide receiver Troy Franklin from Oregon. He's another guy. Like, listen, this is littered with wide receivers. I've already got one, two, three, four. This is now my fifth wide receiver. I'm only to 36. Troy Franklin, I think he can be a number one wide receiver. Um, his, his ability to get open and then and then I would say make adjusted catches. It's not always. It's not always contested, like a Keon Coleman, which we'll get to later. But it's the adjustment catch is really uncanny, and I and I like that abil ability of his. Graham Barton is number thirty-five. He's an interior offensive lineman from Duke. Here's another Texas Longhorn, Adonai Mitchell, transferred in from Georgia. He was excellent, and he's the type of guy that goes under the radar a bit as we're going through this draft process because there's so many different wide receivers. And yet, it's not going to shock me if we look up in four or five years and Adonai Mitchell, maybe it isn't the best one, but he's a number one somewhere. Like, he's, he's got top-end potential to be a number one because of his, his size, skill, speed, athleticism combination. 
All of that combination means that he could go be a number one. At number 33 on my list is Enos Rakestraw from Missouri, the corner. Uh, good player. And he's a guy that has that requisite length and coverage ability that makes him valuable. Then we get to another wide receiver. This time we go to Keon Coleman from Florida State. Again, his ability to make contested catches is special. And, and I talked with Daniel Jeremiah about this quite a bit. And actually, we talked about it on, on the podcast that he and I, that he joined me on right here. So a couple of weeks ago, go back and check it out if you haven't listened. We talked about wide receivers. And, and there, was a, there was one small portion of that interview conversation. And, and we talked about the importance of having guys that can make contested catches. Because in the playoffs in the National Football League, you have to make contested catches. And it's not always just 50-50 catches. It's just that you will be contacted. Nothing's easy in the playoffs in the NFL. It just isn't. So the guys that can go in and be physically ready for that and succeed through it are the ones that can have more success early in their career. And I think that's what Keon Coleman can potentially do. 31, Kool-Aid McKinstry, the corner from Alabama. I mean, we've been talking about him for a long time. He's a, he's a really good player, uh, and he's number 31. Thank you for watching the Joel Class Show YouTube channel. And if you like this clip, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. And you can stay up to date on all of my college football coverage.